Hey, what's up, guys? In this tutorial, we're going to focus on track header controls in DaVinci Resolve, understanding what they are and what they do. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to look at here is destination control. Now, what this button does is to control which track our source clip is going to go into when we bring it into the timeline using editing commands from DaVinci Resolve. So here in our example, if we open up a source clip and we start to bring it into the timeline, using editing commands like insert, replace, overwrite, or you can use keyboard shortcuts like F9, F10, you're going to see that all these changes are happening on the first track for both audio and video because the first track has destination control turned on by default. Now, what if we change this? What if we turn on destination control for the second track uh, instead for both audio and video? Now, if we go ahead and execute the same commands, you're going to see that all these changes are now going to happen on the second track instead. Now, what if we simply just turn off destination control for our tracks here? Now, you're going to notice that when we execute the same commands, nothing is going to happen because it doesn't know which track to execute this into. So knowing that we can actually take advantage of this. So what if we simply just turn off destination control for, let's say, the audio track? So now if we execute the same commands, only the video part of the clip will get executed into our first track here. So this can be particularly helpful if you only want to bring the video or audio part of the clip. OK, moving on, let's go ahead and talk about the lock track button here. Now, what this button does is to lock the entire track and stop it from being edited. Now, for our examples here, if we lock the video and audio tracks, you're going to see that, first of all, in the inspector panel, all these editing operations are grayed out. And whether you are trying to move the clip, remove it or trim it, nothing is going to happen. So it's great for maintaining the integrity of clips on that track, especially if you're at the end of an editing process. Now, however, if we take our clip here to the Fusion page, we can still actually add Fusion effect. So if we go ahead and right now, let's say add a text node, you are still going to see the text show up for our clip here on the edit page. The same with color page. If we take our clip to the color page and color grade it, you can still see this effect show up on the edit page. Now, lastly, I just want to mention that if we lock track for our second tracks here, you're going to see that any ripple edits that you do on the first track, like ripple delete, is not going to affect our second track here at all. Now, let's talk about the enable button here, which is also the mute button for the audio track. Now, if we disable an entire track, what that will do is just to stop the entire track from being rendered. So we're not going to see any output, any preview whatsoever uh, in the viewer up top. So if we go ahead and disable our first track, you're going to see nothing except the clip that's on the second track. Now, for the clips that are on the first track here, we can still actually make changes to it. We can still make edits to clips on our first track here, even a ripple delete. And if we try to take our clip to the Fusion page, you will see that it will automatically go to the clip that's on the second track. And if we delete this uh, clip and do the same thing, now you're going to see that the Fusion page is going to show nothing. The same with the color page, it will also show nothing because our entire track here has been disabled. Now, if we turn everything back on and we start to make a change uh, to our clip here on the Fusion page, let's say add a text. Now, if we come back to the edit page and we don't want this to render, now what you could do is just simply disable this entire track. However, if you want to turn it back on uh, and now you're going to see that uh, the rendering bar is also going to come back. OK, lastly, let's talk about auto select. Now, I also have another video specifically on this subject, so feel free to check that video out. Now, what auto select does in a nutshell is to stop the entire track from being affected by an editing operation. So for our uh, example here, the first track has auto select turned on. If we switch to the trim edit mode, you're going to see that ripple edit is going to be present. However, if we turn off auto select for our first tracks here and do the same thing, you're going to see that the ripple edit is no longer going to be present. It's not going to affect uh, our clips on the first track here. Another example here is if we set the in and out points and we hit the delete button, all the clips within this range will get deleted. However, if we turn off auto select for the first tracks, you're going to see the only clip on the second track will now get affected. So I hope this tutorial helps guys and I will see you next time.